Good evening. Glad to uh, welcome you all here to the Fenton United Methodist Church on Christmas Eve. And uh, I hope that uh, you will find this uh, service a blessing to you and um, be an important part of your Christmas celebration. A couple things I want to mention. We had planned initially to uh, serve folks in the pews by bringing communion to you. But with the uh, resurgence of COVID, we decided that that probably was not a wise way to approach it. So we're, we're falling back into what we did before where the elements for communion are in the pews. So you'll notice a, a little tray, paper tray there with a Ziploc bag and uh, some elements. Now the instructions were for a little bit different than what we have because they didn't come in. So we had to use what, what we could get a hold of. And um, the, uh, the others are on back order. So um, I, I'm going to assume that you'll figure it out when we get to the time of communion. But uh, just a, a little tip. When you take the cup, there's two covers. One's over the juice. That's the purple cover. And then there's a clear cover that's over the little wafer, the bread. So you want to remove the clear one without removing the purple foil when you get to that point. So I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, also just a reminder that um, we're using reasonable precautions. So we're asking folks when they're coming and going to wear masks. When you're sitting in a pew and you're socially distanced from anybody else but your family that, that you've been hanging out with anyway, uh, you're certainly welcome to take your mask off. We encourage you to then, if you're going to sing, please put your mask back on when you're singing. I know that's frustrating. I hate it. But um, it's one of those things that we feel like if we do those things, and so far since the beginning of this, um, as far as we know, when we've asked questions and, and asked people to tell, let us know what's going on, nobody has picked up COVID here at church. So we're happy about that and would like to continue that, uh, that record. So another change that I want to lift up to you is the children's message. Um, our youth director, Faye Hartzog, is going to be doing the children's message for us. So we thank you for that. And um, then the final thing, just to mention with the candles, when we get to the handheld candles, um, the, the important rule to keep in mind is when your candle is lit, you never tilt it, okay? So if you're holding out your candle for somebody else to light their candle uh, and they're just holding theirs straight, just tell them, tip yours over. <laughs> but if yours is lit, don't tip it over because that way the wax stays where it's supposed to stay and the fire stays where it's supposed to stay and, and I don't have to get you really filthy with fire extinguisher powder. So we don't want to do that. That's no fun. We don't want to ruin Christmas. So just a little bit of carefulness will help you. Also, if you were not aware, if you have small children, we have um, the LED tea lights for them to use. And they're welcome to use them anytime all night here and take them with them when they go. That way it may save some, you know, angst and, and worry on your part. Uh, so when you get a chance, just get up for them and, and grab one of those. Or if it would really benefit you not to have a, uh, a candle with real fire, just take one for yourself. You're welcome to use one as well. I think we've covered the, uh, the housekeeping things, and uh, we're glad you're here tonight. And we're going to begin by singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 240, Stand If You're Able. <laughs> Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelicals proclaim, Christ is born. In Bethlehem, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest heaven 
God at sea, hail the incarnate deity, pleased with us in flesh to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King, hail the Light and life to all he brings, risked with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that we no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. You may be seated. Our unison prayer is number 231 in your hymnals. The words are also printed on the screen. Let us pray this prayer together. Eternal God, by the birth of Jesus Christ, you gave yourself to the world. Grant that being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen. Read a story. It's a story about Christmas Eve, the night of all nights, Christmas Eve. So if you would, come on up, and we're going to share the story and light our Christ candle in the Advent wreath this evening. They are little black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. I feel like we have a shy crowd up here this evening. <laughs> Everybody is so snazzy, and and they're red and everything. Wow, it's great. So, do you all know about Christmas Eve? Yeah? Okay. What happens during Christmas Eve? Does a person by the name of Santa come to visit? Maybe? Maybe? Well, what happens on Christmas morning? Do you get presents? Yes. And a lot of them, hopefully. Well, this evening, we're going to read a story about Christmas Eve. I think you'll find it really magical and wondrous. So here's the story. It was the middle of the night. In night of all nights, it was Christmas. The children couldn't sleep. They had lain in their beds for hours, listening and pretending. They saw reindeer and sugar plums and angels and stars and wise men. Then one of the children said, let us all go down and touch the tree and make a wish before we go to sleep. So very quietly in the large cold playroom, they took their clothes under the covers and dressed themselves. They put on their sweaters and slippers and socks and bathrobes. In the big quiet house where the people were sleeping, the children got out of their beds. Then into the upstairs they went. Quietly. 
almost without breathing. They went past the door where their mother and father were sleeping. So quietly through the hall, no sound until the top stair creaked, and then they all stood still and listened. No sound but their own thumping hearts, and now they were creeping downstairs in the middle of the night, in night of all nights, Christmas night. Out the window, it even looked like Christmas, the quietest night in the world with snow falling so softly, so quietly. Great green evergreen branches on the stairs and red holly berries in the hall. Downstairs, it was still warm. The warm smells of Christmas pine trees and wood smoke and a wonderful smell of Christmas seals and packages not yet opened. The night before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Do you all see the picture of them going down the stairs? Yeah. Quietly listening, and listening all over with eyes and ears and hands and feet, they went down into the warm, dark, pine-scented hall. They came to the living room door, and they listened. Beyond the window pane, white flakes in the blue night, the snow fell down. They even, they, they couldn't hear it. A piece of wood cracked in the dying fire. Then the children went into the room and stood close together on the soft rug in front of the fire. They couldn't speak or move. It was as though a magic had come true. This is the magic that they saw. The Christmas tree was all there, trimmed with shiny glints of red and blue and green that flickered in the dying firelight. Silver and gold tinsel hung all over the tree, loads and loads of tinsel, gold tinsel. And in front of the chimney, where they could reach out and touch them, hung their stockings, filled with little white bundles and tangerines. That's, those are like oranges. And strange shapes. If they reached out their hands, they could touch them. Do you see their stockings? Hmm? Under the tree were more packages. And there was one big package, and they all saw it. It looked like an electric train. It went all around the tree, and they all saw it. And no one spoke. No one moved. Do you see the train? It's pretty fun, isn't it? And then suddenly in the night, through the soft snow falling outside, the voices came. They really came, voices so quietly in the night singing. O oh, holy night, silent night, all is calm, all is bright. And the children ran to the window. Dark figures were moving outside in the snow. And the dark figures carried a lantern. They were grown-up people singing. The children listened. The sound of the voices seemed to fall with the snow. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. And the song stopped. There was that quietness again. The grown up people moved around outside, dark figures against the white snow, and the Christmas carolers. The Christmas killers were grown-up people who went from house to house singing Christmas songs on Christmas Eve. These are the Christmas killers outside in the snow. The children quickly turned towards the stairs, and they went up the stairs almost running, only as quietly as they could. Hi. 
and they jumped into bed with their clothes on. Their hearts were pounding. Then the singing began again. God rest, ye merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. O tidings of comfort and joy. The end. It's a lovely Christmas story, perhaps maybe a little old for you all. But Christmas is a magical time. Part of what makes Christmas so magical to us is Jesus, whose birth we celebrate on Christmas Eve. So, at this time, we're going to light this thing over here. It's called an Advent wreath. And we're going to light all five candles. Do you all know what the middle candle is called? Do you want to take a guess? A guess? A guess? Christ candle. It's good. The first one. The second. And the third. And the fourth, and now the fifth. The Christ candle represents Jesus Christ and the light that he brought to our world to save us. Would you pray with me as we continue on with the magical nature of Christmas Eve and as we wait for Santa Claus? and hopefully some good presence in the morning. Father, we come before you this evening thanking you for the life and for the magic and for the wonder that you have provided to us today. God, we remember that we are a part of your creation, that each one of us has an important part in the world. And so today and always, help us to remember that no matter what we do wrong or what we do right, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Amen. May we turn back to your pews. So as you're able, Stand, and we're going to sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. It's 234 in your hymnals, and the words are on the screen. Have no 
above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. See how the shepherds summon to his cradle, leaving their flocks drawn nigh to gaze. We too will thither bend our joyful footsteps. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. You may be seated. Our scripture this evening is from the Gospel of John. It's from chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth." Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. And when, as Christians, we think about Jesus, we have a lot of different names that we might use. The Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. John uses a a word. It is the word. And he chooses it because John wants us to move beyond our limited perspectives. He wants us to to listen and understand who Jesus really is and what is significant about his coming. John uses this different name because he wants to try to tap into and address the complexity of who the Son of God is and the ministry that the Son of God had in the flesh, in our world. It It helps when you look at it from a new viewpoint, and that's what John was doing as he talked about the Word. John gives a special insight by using that phrase, the Word. It's not something that we hear a lot in Scripture. It gets touched on in different ways by John, uh, but it comes through clearly here at the beginning of his Gospel. And in a way, this is John's Christmas story. It's not the one we're used to hearing, not the one we're, we've usually focused on, but it's a way for us to look at the birth of Jesus kind of from a distance, to understand the significance of who this baby was and what this child would do as he grew up. The scriptures say God spoke in the past through individual messengers of God's words and agents of God's works. But in the latter days, God has spoken in a unique way. And that way is through 
the Son of God. As John would put it, the Word. God the Son came as the Word of God in the flesh. And at first, it may just sound like a cute phrase, but, but I want you to think about that. The Word of God came in the flesh. Jesus didn't speak God's Word or do God's works for us. Jesus was the very Word of God. And the work he did was the very work of God. And so in Jesus, we have the perfect communication device. A real living person. Flesh and blood. Solid. And the ability to get confused about what Jesus was trying to do is lessened because the message that Jesus brings is himself. He, he is the message. It's not just the words he speaks. It's not just the word works he does. It is himself. And so when we celebrate Christmas and we celebrate Jesus' birth, we've got to understand that we're really looking at God's perfect communication in the very person of Jesus Christ. In the very beginning, the word preexisted with God, John tells us. The word was in essential nature divine. It's some of those things it's hard to translate from the passage itself because it gets wordy. <laughs> but what John's saying is that the word was with God from the beginning, not created by God, but that the word was God as well. He came in the flesh, not merely a human or merely a divine being. He wasn't wearing a human suit pretending to be human. He was fully human. He went through everything that a human being has to go through. John Wesley would try to, to lay out an understanding of, of who Jesus was. Charles, I think, did it in a poetic way, probably as good as anybody. But both of them would talk about how the Son of God or in this case, in this passage, the word, set aside his position and power. So he enters into the world, not as the creator, not as the king, not as royalty, not as a powerful person, not of a person of prestige, but just a common person. Somebody on the poor side of the economic scale. And Jesus has to go through everything that we went through. And so by laying aside his position and his power, he becomes vulnerable, helpless. He has to learn stuff just like we had to learn stuff. He has to be potty trained. He has to learn not to stick his hand in the fire. He has to learn all the things you have to teach a child as they grow up. He had to learn his ABCs, or in his case, his Alpha and Omegas, you know? He had to learn everything, that, just like we do. He wasn't magically endowed with information. When he takes on his ministry and he receives the Holy Spirit, Jesus is then given some supernatural powers to heal. But... Nothing special. It didn't just shoot out of his fingertips or something like that. He would, he would ask God to do things because he had laid aside that position. He had laid aside those powers. And so when we think about Jesus laying in a manger in a feed box of hay, we want to remember that he's not just putting on a show, he's not just putting on a costume. He is truly putting on flesh, becoming fully human, and entering our world as vulnerable as we are. Jesus was both divine and human in one being. Now, he couldn't be fully each of those. So he laid aside, as I said, his position and power, his, his character was still divine. 
He still loved as God loves. But he had to mature and grow up. And he began his ministry as an adult, many years as an adult. We know Jesus, Jesus was physically limited as we are. But we also know that Jesus still had the heart and character of God. To be fully human, he had to lay aside those things, the position and power that he had before. But he was willing to humiliate himself, to humble himself, to get down on our level because he loved us so much. And Christmas is about that love coming in the flesh, entering into our world to save and transform us into children of God. We were created to be children of God, but the sin and selfishness that became part of our lives right from the get-go tripped us up and separated us from God. But through what Jesus has done, he draws us back. And so just as Jesus laid aside his divine power and position, when Jesus, the word, comes to live within us, he empowers us to lay aside sin and selfishness so that we might be fully children of God. Initially, we're children of God by name. We got a title. We got a label. Because we've accepted the salvation Jesus has brought, we become children of God, but we don't live that out fully yet. That's where the word wants to work within us to transform us so that we become each and every day more and more children of, like children of God. We act like children of God. We think like children of God. We feel like children of God. And that's only as we rely upon that word to transform us, to work within us. But he gives us the power to be more than just human. We can become children of God in the way that we live and think and feel and act. Let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks this evening as we remember your coming into the world. Not with fanfare, not with shouts and parades, not with military following behind but you come just as we enter the world vulnerable and helpless and so we give thanks for the parents you chose for yourself Joseph and Mary and ask that you would enable us to become your children to become people who have that divine word living within them as well this we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and take the elements. I'm going to explain why we celebrate Holy Communion, not just throughout the year, but especially on Christmas Eve. In the celebrating of communion, we remember the night in which Jesus was betrayed. The night in which he shared with his disciples bread and juice. It was in a, in a supper that was called a Passover meal. And at the point of the meal, after, toward the end of the meal, Jesus took bread which represented the presence of God. And he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you. And in that breaking, he shared it among with his disciples as they each took bread. And they tried to figure out what was Jesus saying to them. We too... We understand a little better than the disciples did that night. We understand that Christ was the presence of God. Jesus was the presence of God. The word had come in the flesh. And that he was inviting us to become his body in ministry to all the world. And then he took the cup. I'm going to give you a chance now to, to go and take the, the bread. When he took the cup, it was the cup of redemption. The third cup in the meal. 
symbolic of God's saving power. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take, drink, all of you. Lord God, as we share this body and blood, we give thanks. We remember that even at your birth, your death and resurrection were part of the plan. They were understood to be part of your salvation work in our lives and in the lives of everyone in the world. Continue to work in and through us, Lord to transform us into your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we're at the point of the service where we light handheld candles and uh, we'll, we'll dim the lights down after we've kind of completed that task. We begin our time, you'll notice the songs listed there do not have hymn numbers. We don't want you to do anything but hold on to your candle. The words will be on the screen for you and to start us off, Emily Danielsons and Tina Wibbemeyer will... Uh, grace us with a, uh, a song to enable us to light the candles. I will go with the Christ candle down the center aisle and I would just ask if you're not sitting right there, if you would just kind of get up, move over and light your candle off of the Christ candle and uh, then go back and pass the light along your pew. Beautiful, 
X saying away in the manger. And uh, you can hold your candles up. I don't think we need to stand. It might be easier if we sat. But uh, as, as we go along, things will be a little darker. And we will... Uh, there we go. That's what's next. All right.
us angels the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Now, as we're preparing for our closing prayer, just encourage you to go ahead and blow out your candles. Let the wax harden before you do anything else with it. Our closing praise is Emmanuel, Emmanuel. The words are on the screen. Emmanuel 
Emmanuel. Go now into this night knowing that Christ is with us. He has come to be with us. He is with us even to this day. He came in the flesh so that he might redeem us who are in the flesh. Amen.